Dr. Cara Fitzgerald is a functional medicine practitioner who maintains a private practice in Sandy Hook, Connecticut, and is on the faculty of the Institute of Functional Medicine. She was the lead author of a paper published in Aging, Potential Reversal of Epigenetic Age Using a Diet and Lifestyle Intervention, a pilot randomized clinical trial, which showed a reversal of epigenetic age for the participants based on diet and lifestyle interventions only. Dr. Fitzgerald's book, Younger You, Reduce Your Bioage and Live Longer, Better, which documents the program with practical steps to implement is now available. With that, let me start the interview. So hello, Dr. Fitzgerald, and welcome back to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us again today. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Richard. Thank you. So congratulations on getting your new book, uh, Younger You, Reduce Your Bioage and Live Longer and Better, published. Uh, it will be available yeah. on the 18th. Is that January correct? 18th. Yep. January 18th. But you can pre-order now. That's right. Excellent. So can I just ask, so what made you write the book? Because, I mean, you're already running your own practice. And uh, you're, you're very yeah, busy. busy. Yes. <laughs> so what um, made you to write the book? You know, we've been using this program in practice for a long time, um, you know, years before we released it. And we were, we wrote an ebook. you know, we had released an ebook back in the day. And, you know, I'd been lecturing on it, the content for a long time. And I've just always wanted to make this more broadly available. But getting the opportunity to actually, you know, conduct a randomized control trial on it and to start unpack the findings as far as um, changes to DNA methylation has, you know, just solidified wanting to make it, uh, you know, broadly available. And I've got a good team here. Um, there's a, you know, it's a smart, it's a well-run clinic. I was able to really kind of steal away and devote myself to it. Um, the bulk of which happened, or all of it happened during during COVID. So things were different anyway. So yeah, it, it's, it, it just, it became a priority. I think, you know, our findings, Richard, in the study um, and the possibility of nutrition influencing uh, epigenetics and gene expression uh, has it just is, I want to put more time into it. So I think that this first study really whet my appetite to continue to research this. And I mean, it's changing, it's changing my career priorities. I, you know, we've got an IRB approval um, now. So we've got a digital platform for people who are interested. Uh, they can go to youngeryouprogram.com and they'll see, you know, a link to you know, about the book and getting the book. But if you scroll down, you'll also see we have this digital program. And um, it's the study, you know, in an app, basically access to this to, to the same nutritionists, um, you know, to the same biological age uh, array that we used, actually, it's through true diagnostic, but it's, you know, still similar to the epic array that we used in our study. And the supplements, et cetera, and then all sorts of support. So we've gotten IRB approval to continue to study that. And people who want to can kind of go in that research arm, or you can just, you know, have access to the app. And, you know, I want to, I want to continue to tweak it. I want to layer in other interventions, you know, look at a different population. And I just, I, I feel kind of revved up about, you know, the possibility of bioage reversal and you know, what we can do in the world of, you know, nutrition intervention. Right. And I, I must say, I think that it's really important. The interventions that you're suggesting are so doable, right? And yeah. they seem, seem to work. Yeah. So can we briefly kind of review the initial trial that kind of led to all of this? So we, yeah. we did, we did talk about it last time and I will link to that, um, you know, our, our conversation, but uh, just briefly, what did you find? What did you find in the first trial? Yeah, so we prescribed a nutrition program that it, that consisted of a very specifically designed diet, uh, heavy on methyl donors, so folates and betaine, B twelve, choline, etc. Um, some animal protein, providing methionine and other important amino acids. Um, 
we, we wanted patient participants to have liver a few times a week, which is basically a multivitamin in the food matrix, including folate and B12 again and choline. Um, and then we used what we call um, um, methylation adaptogens. They're other, they're, they're polyphenol epinutrients that uh, influence the behavior of some of the enzymes seem to support uh, DNA methylation sort of happening where we want it, if you will. And I know that's a, you know, that's a sort of a stretch of a statement, but that seems to be what we're, what we've seen in our study. So we had these high polyphenol intake, colorful veggies and fruits, et cetera, lots of methyl donors. Um, it was a low glycemic program, keto leaning, a little bit of inter gentle intermittent fasting. And then we prescribed exercise, a modest exercise prescription, uh, 30 minutes, five days a week, perceived exertion, 60 to 80%. So nothing really um, arduous. Uh, uh, meditation, so 10 minutes twice daily, 10 to 20 minutes twice daily. We, we paid attention to sleep. We wanted people to sleep well and uh, kind of supported them in that. You know, we talked, gave them sleep tips and so forth. And then we used a greens powder to turn the volume up again on those epinutrients. And we used a probiotic lactobacillus plantarum. Uh, so that was our intervention for eight weeks. Uh, we had a control group we had, and, and our study group. Um, it was conducted at Healthcott Research Institute in Portland, Oregon. And at the end of eight weeks time, we saw a um, bioage reversal in our participants as compared to controls by um, just over three years and a within group bioage reversal of almost two years. And that was just under statistical significance, but we'll, you know, we'll um, you know, just continue to look at that. I think it was a bit, you know, it was 0. 0.6. So it was a strong trend towards significance. And our, of course our, pop, our population size was, was small. So I think that lends uh, more weight to that finding. But they also lowered, you know, cholesterol was lowered, LDL specifically, total cholesterol. Triglycerides were significantly lowered, which I think provides evidence for it being keto leaning. Circulating methylated folate increased in the population despite no use of you know isolated supplements. So, yeah, I mean, and that was that was really good because that was like the third the third trial that had actually shown um, age reversal, epi yeah. yeah epigenetic age reversal. Yeah, and we used the Horvath 2013 clock. Yeah, and it was the first control trial, which I, I, th I think it still is. But and and certainly the time frame was, um, you know, the shortest to show reversal. Right. So can you explain a little bit about your strategy for re reversing it? You kind of talked about it. it it's related yes. to the epigenetic changes and the methylation. But yes. Um, yeah. Can you talk about that? Our, so the entire program, everything that we're doing, it's, I mean, it's a healthful design for many reasons. It's anti-inflammatory, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's keto leaning. I mean, you can, uh, you know, it's high in antioxidants. There's, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why it's a healthful diet and lifestyle pattern. But for me in the design, I was DNA methylation you know, thinking about what would sort of optimize TNA methylation activity um, was top of mind. And the reason is because, it, well, there's been some in interesting, really interesting studies since we first designed. It seems that aging really happens at the, at the level of the epigenome. And then there, and then we could say, so if we were going to create a hierarchy out of the hallmark of age, the hallmarks, I would say that, you know, first we're looking at epigenetic, the alteration of epigenetic expression, and then we're seeing this trickle down and outcome with inflammation, with, you know, you know, loss of antioxidants, with, you know, telomere damage, et cetera, et cetera. But I think, I think that the driver appears to be epigenetic dysregulation, at least that's you know, where I'm, I'm, I'm hedging my bets. And I think that the, you know, the recent studies coming out of, of Sinclair's lab, you know, looking at that, um, 
age-related optic neuropathy and looking at aging in general and those animal studies that they reverse, you know, they show that it's driven by epigenetic dysregulation and then they reverse it using three of the four Yamanaka factors, which influence, you know, methylation and demethylation. And they, and they point to the fact that the youthful epigenetic mark marks are there are retained. They just need to be restored. So that memory is there. And so it, it just, it seemed that it just seems that we want to be putting attention to this to this extraordinary uh, possibility, and I think our study suggests yes. So by providing the methylation agents and then the adaptogens to get them to up update the the epigenome in the, in yeah, the so right way. Like, let me say that yeah, we didn't increase net methylation in our study participants. Right. They didn't uh, on the on the epigenome. So when you look at the methylone, there wasn't a net significant increase as compared to the controls. So what our findings suggest is that they were rearranged. Methylation marks were rearranged to, to a more favorable profile. So, yeah, that, you know, that suggests that we were supporting methylation, but also supporting where it was happening, which. I just think is is exciting and cool and deserves more inquiry.